Chuck. Yeah, man. Look who I found wandering on the hallways outside my office. I, th- this is what goes on at your place of work. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> this is Lika Guhatakurta, who's a program scientist at NASA's heliophysics division. Yeah, living with stars, right? Well, on. one star in particular. Uh huh. Heliophysics. That would be our star, right? Oh, thank you. That's kind of our star, right? You know, <laughs> the only star that really matters when you think hey, about it. You say it. The only star that counts. That's it. <laughs> Says the person who, for whom the sun is the object of her research. Yes. Right. Okay. Right. Right. How about the other hundred trillion squillion stars in the universe? Yeah, we, we inform them of our knowledge. You <laughs> know, and so we understand them that's, better. It's some base knowledge that's coming from the sun. We gotta, yeah, I got to yeah. hand it to you. Right. So uh, we only have you for a couple of minutes. Just tell people what space weather is. That's a new term that's working its way into the public. And, and I, I don't think people know what we mean when we say space weather. Space weather is interesting, and it's, it's kind of difficult to explain, but think of terrestrial weather, right? I mean, terrestrial weather, we have storms, we have hurricanes, you know, we have rain. We have similar kind of terminologies for stuff that goes on in the interplanetary space. So the sun kind of spews out particles and radiations and mm. solar wind. And sometimes the solar wind is gusty and sometimes it's gentle. We have flares or coronal mass ejections. These are humongous storms, actually. But all of these, basically all the particles, electrons, protons, these are charged particles, tangled with magnetic field, start traveling towards our planet, all other planets, but we are most kind of really uh, thoughtful about our own planet. And these particles essentially start interacting with our electronics, spacecraft, um, you know, sensitive equipment. They start producing radiation on um, astronauts in space. If they are exposed to it, we are very careful sort of monitoring the sun, passing the information to NOAA who can give the prediction and forecast for all of this. We so so have NOAA, the, uh, uh, no, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric, Atmospheric Administration that monitors our weather satellites. That's right. right. Yeah. They mm-hmm. are also in charge of uh, predicting uh, space weather, forecasting I didn't, space I did weather. not know that. Oh. Okay. We at NASA really create the knowledge, the understanding. The satellites are mostly ours. And we pass it on to our sister agency, NOAA, who then pass it on to all the customers, oh. essentially. So, how, so come I, how come I, where can I get this weather report? <laughs> oh, space weather report. Not yes, weather report. They're not weather, yeah, the that space weather be, report. That would be a title of some album or something. Yes, yeah. the weather report. Oh, yes, oh, I remember oh, I re- that. I remember them. Yeah. We're giving our age away. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, if you go to the NOAA website, you can find that. Um, just do Google. You know, I even sometimes, if I forget my name, I do Google to find myself. <laughs> the whole thing. Google is amazing. So, yeah. So you I'm casually sure. said in there that we have all these particles ejecting from the sun, and, oh, they interact with our satellites. This could be devastating to modern civilization where so much of our IT and communication assets mm-hmm. are vulnerable in space right now. I, I don't like to scare people, but there's a scary side to the sun. <laughs> there is. Uh, well, that's why we watch it and we try to understand if someone it. Said, I don't like I to don't scare like people, people but, but this is a bad thing. Right, exactly. <laughs> you, you know what's happening. I, I don't solar mean to Max alarm is you. Coming. Wait, wait, so tell me about solar max. So, uh, sun is, you know, sun has a cycle every 11 years the magnetic field of the sun goes from being minimum to maximum. And so we are in the rising phase of the solar cycle right now. And the interesting part is that, you know, it's not going to be out of the ordinary active sun, but this is the first time in the history of humankind we have as many satellites in space and we are launching, like think of Starlink, Every other month, we are launching satellites, right? These are all vulnerable to what happens on the sun. So so these charged particles interact with the electronics of the machines, and there's no telling what 
effect it will have. That's right. So that's why when you when when you know it's coming, we sort of send a warning to operators to turn this off. But it's not just electronics. Remember what happened uh, last year, early part of last year, Starlink launched some. 40, 50 satellites and lost a bunch of them oh. because of drag issue. Because they were like ordinary small coronal mass ejections, but it happened one after another and it created an environment, you know, that essentially increased the drag and therefore these satellites couldn't lift. Wait, wait you said increase the drag. So if I understand what you're saying, the more active the sun becomes, the warmer Earth's atmosphere gets, and the Earth's atmosphere expands, creating air molecules that wouldn't previously be uh, interfering with the movement of a satellite. Wow. And That's kinetic energy. Right, 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 right. Okay. So, so they, uh, so basically they kind of moved the goalpost. <laughs> yes, <they did. laughs> what a wonderful way to say that. Yeah, I'm going to launch here, and it kind of moved it away. Right? Yeah, I, you, and there. you thought you'd be safe. So, <laughs> right. So, so basically, like that. they were taken out by space weather. We don't say that so loudly because, you know, <laughs> I mean, we were not there to measure everything. So what we are doing is creating the understanding and theorizing and saying, yeah, that's what it looks like. We don't have satellites. They're measuring it. Hey, folks, apologies for the interruption, but we wanted to take a quick break to thank our partners at Delete Me for sponsoring today's video. If your experience is anything like mine, I'm sure you see it all the time. Creaky ads that feel like you're being spied on, malicious links sent to your email and your text messages. It's almost impossible to trust anything you see online these days. And it's even worse that these things are being directly targeted at us based on the personal information we thought we were sharing privately. If you're unfamiliar with Delete Me, it's a service dedicated to protecting your online identity by scouring the internet to remove personal data from data broker sites and online directories. Delete Me ensures your privacy by minimizing the traces you leave behind, reducing the chances of identity theft, scams, and those annoying unwanted solicitations. So if you're looking to regain control of your digital footprint, then I personally recommend that you check out Delete Me to help you get your privacy back. If you're interested in learning more, head to joindeleteme.com slash startalk for 20% off all consumer plans and use code startalk at checkout for your discount. That's joindeleteme.com slash startalk, code startalk at checkout. All right, so we are as we are more susceptible than ever before. So if if you say, all right, we see some particles coming because they don't move as fast as light does, right? right? So you can yeah. see the explosion, but to feel the particles, there's a delay. There is a delay. And it depends on the speed with which these uh, particles are launched. And then you make the announcement, but isn't everybody just a sitting duck unless they have special protecting shields? And where can I get both? one of those shields? <laughs> oh, you want one too? Yes. <laughs> so basically, uh, anything that affects electronics, you know, when a flare happens, a flare produces the fastest kind of um, you know, particles. Energetic right? particles. Right, mm -hmm. but the radiation travels at the speed of light, right? So x-rays and all traveling at the speed of light. And it's this radiation that essentially energizes the ionosphere. So there are many different components of space weather, just like terrestrial weather. But the difference is that it is driven by magnetic field and charged particles. Nothing like Earth's neutral atmosphere. Right. It's not gravity. It's not wind. It's whole other forces yes. in the portfolio of physics. Right, and that's why it's so difficult to explain, but that's mm -hmm. why it's so fascinating to study. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I thought the magnetic field of Earth was protecting us from all this stuff. Yeah, yeah. I what, thought, what, 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 what's going we, on? Yeah. We are doing a good job, that means. We are giving <laughs> out information. I'm so delighted to hear that is very true, very true. So if you compare Mars and our planet, you know, we are a habitable planet. What do you think happened on Mars? 
Something bad. Purely theorizing. Something bad because, happened because, on Mars. Because they don't have a robust magnetic field like ours. All right. So the solar wind can continuously strip off. Now, was Exxon ever located on Mars? I'm just asking. Oh, well, I'm just, I'm just asking. I'm, I'm not saying anything. I'm, I'm just asking. I'm innocent of that. Outside my purview. Okay. Okay. Quick, before just we run out of time. So NASA has some very good satellites that monitor the sun close up, right? Yes. What are a couple of those satellites? Oh my God, the one closest to my heart is Parker Solar Probe. That's the one that moves really fast? Really fast and real close. So I believe December 24th is Parker Solar Probe's perihelion. It's going to reach within 10 solar radii of the sun. What? Wow. Why, doesn't the just, why doesn't it just Why doesn't it just vaporize? What you what you oh, make it out of? We are NASA. We are NASA. <laughs> <laughs> we bad. We bad. <laughs> Stupid question. Right. I'm sorry. Sorry. But that sounds really close. Is that the oh, closest we've God. ever been to the sun? Yes. Okay. Closest that anything has ever been uh, to the sun. The fastest that any spacecraft has moved. Because in. It, the sun's gravity helps yeah. speed it up yeah. as it comes right. in. Right. Wow. Okay, so we should watch for that. Uh, oh, that's going to be a big thing. We call it heliophysics big year. We are celebrating the eclipses coming up, right? Yes, okay. Annular eclipse, 14th of October. Total solar eclipse. If you haven't seen it, you have to take yourself to the path of totality. Mm -hmm. 8th April, 2024. Right. And then the heliophysics big year sort of ends with a big bang when Parker reaches... Oh, so that's 2024. Yes. 2024. So we have yes. time to, to yeah. get to emotionally ready yes. for it. Nice. Right. Right. Okay. All right. I can't wait. I can't wait. There, there's just a lot going on <laughs> under the sun. That's why. Yeah. Okay, so, so when is when is NASA going to send astronauts to the sun? Oh, and it's dark on the back. On the side. back side. Yeah, we, we, we can send them at night. At, when, night. at night. That's at right. Night. <laughs> that they'll be safe if we send them at night. Uh, okay, Lika, thanks for stopping by. I don't know what you did to me. If I get fired, oh, for this get fired. <laughs> all right, we'll, we'll get you a job on the on the on the on the street corner okay, here. I promise. Fine. Fine. <laughs> all Thank right, you. this has been another Star Talk Explainer with someone who lives on the sun, or at least works on, on the sun. The sun. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to live as a star. Oh, right that's on. even that's beyond where I was even taking that. There you go. <laughs> so, Lika, thanks for stopping by. Absolutely. Pleasure Neil, meeting you. Neil Grass Tyson, Chuck Nice. Always good to have you, man. Always a pleasure. All right. Star Talk Explainer. Signing out. Keep looking up. <laughs>